Welcome back to Vegas Live with Nina and you know where I am. I'm on the red sofa, I'm at the pepper mill and it's Tuesday afternoon. Although when the films come out, you know, uh, uh, interviews come out, they're not always, they're kind of any time because it's on the internet. And as you know, our show is all over internet and also Instagram and YouTube and don't forget to subscribe when you go to YouTube and we're kind of getting all over the place. In fact, you know, we have a, a, a not an agent, but we have a talent person in London um, we're now venturing out to Hong Kong, so we're getting really, really out there, and it's amazing because we're now in our fourth year of doing the show, Vegas Lab with Ninon, and uh, I have Patrick with me, Patrick Hogan with me. I met Patrick um, a couple of, well, I don't know, about a month ago or so, maybe longer, and he was playing the piano, and I thought, oh my goodness, this guy's amazing. And um, Sam, who brings a lot of talent to us, said, well, you know, why don't you have him on your show? And I said, I'd love to. Patrick, how are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. You are, this guy is so talented. It's unbelievable. And I've seen you several times. And each time you perform, you are totally different. More stuff comes out. A chameleon. More <laughs> a chameleon. Yes. But more th it's like every time you get out there you, you bring in something fresh and something new and if, if, if one of the acts have sort of forgotten somebody's name you come right up <laughs> well that's, the name that's of the surprise game. Well, it, well I don't know if it is the name of the game but it's the name of your game that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway you're still by the way Patrick I have to say this because I'm so proud of it Patrick is only 23 so and being as talented as he is, how long have you been talented this way? How long have I been talented? Wow, that's that's that's, you that's, started a, that's when a question. You were a child. Let's see. Well, I, I started playing the piano uh, when I was about ten or eleven. Oh really? Um, Not as a but, three year old. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people that end up getting very serious about music, they start when they're something insane, three years yeah, old, three years or, old or something crazy piano, like that. Yeah. Uh, but what? So even though I wasn't playing when I was that young, uh, my parents, who are uh, they're not musicians themselves, but they're big fans of music. Of music. So. Growing up, uh, they would always have uh, jazz records on, like Miles Davis or Wynton Kelly or something like that, as well as uh, Sinatra and Dean Martin. So I grew up around it. Around a lot, all yeah. that stuff. Henry Mancini, all of that stuff. I so knew I. Henry Mancini. Yeah. Oh, really? Yes, really? Oh, I met Henry Mancini. You're very lucky. I'm yes. envious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, unfortunately, you can't meet him because he's passed away. But yeah, fabulous, yeah. fabulous, down to earth man. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I adore him as a, a composer and a, a band leader. You follow writer, his writer footsteps, you'll be a number one. <sighs> <laughs> it would be nice to follow be. in his. It would be, be nice to follow in his footsteps. But uh, yeah, so I, I grew up with all that stuff, um, and then when I began uh, playing piano as part of a school curriculum thing, um, I sort of naturally gravitated towards wanting to do things that were at least you know well jazz straight ahead jazz, and now yeah. I do I do a lot of different things, but a lot of it is, is at so least jazz. So yours was kind of jazz, and, and your, you, is that your favorite sort of? That's that's always been my jazz first love. Jazz classical, yeah, mixing it. Oh, I wish I wish classical. <laughs> um, it's a classical, such a different world. Uh, the 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 chops um, and and technique required for it are so different, different. than yeah. jazz. Yeah. Um, but uh, but uh, but jazz straight, particularly uh, bebop and hard bop and all that stuff. That's always been my first love. And the nice thing about it is that it prepares you to do a lot of different things in the business. So once you learn that, and then that's funny. They say that even they say when you put jazz and classical together, that it gives you the intro to everything else, to the balance yeah. and everything else, which is wonderful. Yeah, like from a, jazz. Yeah, from a theoretical standpoint, and as far as the harmonic knowledge that you get, um, it ends up really helping you in your career. Plus, in jazz. Uh, out of necessity, you have to learn how to play well with other people, <laughs> which is sort well, of a nice still. life skill. <laughs> play well how with does, others. How does that work? Does that I mean it works? Seems to work very well in with a jazz you. setting. Yes. Um, well, if I uh, if I walk into a gig uh, playing for a singer that perhaps I've never met before, um, the uh, the skill set that you have means that you need to be able to go in, and uh, the singer says uh, perhaps, okay, I want to start out with uh, at long last love, Cole Porter. Uh, I want to do this and I want to do it in B flat or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the training that you go through means that you know how the song goes up here, you're familiar with the song, um, and there's uh, there tends to be sort of like stock um, uh, beginnings that you might add onto stock the song. You can pe beginning. stock playing. Yes, you can just you can just play a simple a simple progression in the right key uh, with okay. the bass player and the drummer. And uh, they know exactly when to come and, and they when know to go out. They know exactly are when. Are you the yeah. one that gives them that stuff? Key, no pun intended. But are you the one that gives them the key? The cue. And the cue. Yeah, I guess. To it's come the in. The well, if uh, if we're playing, if we're working with a singer, which is it, that happens frequently all in the time, Vegas, in, all the yes. time, where it might be like basically a quartet. There's a singer, piano, bass, and drums, yes. and 
Who knows if we played with the singer before? Um, generally speaking, you know, if it's like the first tune, then the singer will probably jump in when he or she wants to do What's it, the and, jump then it's, in and, that and then it's our job to keep the ears open and just follow. Unfo you're actually following her or him or whoever yeah, it may yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless unless we have to steer the car if somebody forgets the words or. The <laughs> well, you could just song. jump in and sing the words because you. How could you? How do you do that? Do you know the words to a lot of songs or? Yeah. Um, well, some of it is from hearing them so frequently, growing up with them. It's only 23! Um, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm i thinking about or listening to or playing music practically every moment, every so waking moment. So do you have kind of a photographic mind, memory? For music, I think I do. Yes. Uh, not for other things. <laughs> well, you're not really interested in other things, are you? Yeah. I mean, music is your thing. Well, music I mean, is the thing you that... You know, why bother music with anything else? Pays, music is the thing that pays my bills. Because it pays <laughs> bills. Now, when you go into... Do you ever get any rehearsal time with these people? Um, sometimes, in? sometimes. Um, if it's if it's uh, if it's something for a singer like one of these casual pickup things, yes. Um, sometimes they'll insist on it. But the nice thing is that if the uh, if the people that the singer hires, if, if everybody knows what they're doing, they don't really need. They don't need a rehearsal. rehearsal. Yeah, if well, everybody you might not need a rehearsal, but everybody else. May no, need sometimes a I do. Sometimes I do. And of course, for some for some jobs, uh, if it's a little bit more involved and there's charts or arrangements that are written mm -hmm. out. Which can most of most of the time they're easy to easy enough to read down the first time you look at them, but uh, so sometimes it's better. As of ten years old, you started you know playing the piano and reading music and understanding yeah. it. And did you realize kind of you're going to gravitate towards more of the jazz and more of the kind of with it music that's going on now? Because you have a charisma about you. When you're up there playing, you're not only playing; you're kind of acting. Up there, you're kind of you've got the whole thing going, and you're watching them, oh, and yeah. you're beating, and then you come in and say something, and you're very sort of present with your whole appearance, and that's quite unusual. Cause well, normally there's a play. Being able being able to um, to do that, it means you have to be familiar with your instrument because when you when when you start out playing, most of the time, and this was this was the case with me, um, and you're learning the ropes, yeah. you have to be laser focused on what you're doing and you're not thinking as much about you know the way that you're holding your head um, no, but you're, then, you're very natural but, the way but, you do it yeah but then the, it's, it's because the more that you play and the more that you become experienced on your instrument and experienced with working yes uh, then you're able to feel more relaxed and you're and beginning confident. to understand yourself Exactly, yeah. And so once you start understanding yourself, which I don't know if any of us ever do in our entire <laughs> lifetime, but we do try. <laughs> yeah. um, so 23, are you still in college? Yes, uh, I have, uh, I'm actually in summer school as we speak, doing uh, a few things. I just started, uh, I'm going to be studying conducting with my mentor, Dave Loeb. Um, conducting and I, as well. Yeah, and I'm, now, go, yeah. Does that give you um, the knowledge of knowing about all the instruments and where they come yes. in, and, and um, I would imagine that would happen. Yes, because conductors just seem to stand there, and they're a little bit here and a little bit there. And, <laughs> and then you think, what does a conductor really do? Um, well, the conductor sort of s drives the car. Yeah. Um, he he does have to have a uh, a familiarity uh, at least at least on some basic level with all the instruments. Yes. And in a perfect world, he'd know everybody. But but sometimes you know sometimes. If you're a hired gun with a symphony, or you're, li you're like somebody famous that's a guest artist, then you yeah. come in and you don't know anybody's name. No, of course not. Um, but you, but uh, you, you know your instruments. Yeah, you know your instruments, and uh, you know that the, the you uh, should ideally uh, know the the, uh, the piece that you're going to be conducting, and so it's your job to sort of coordinate because you're not up there actually playing yourself no, you're not when you're holding it, a baton. No, just yeah, you're just making sure that that uh, uh, the time is kept properly. Uh, that everybody comes in when oh, they're supposed to come in. Oh, I, I didn't think of that. So yeah. you actually control the time of come in now. Or yeah, it's, you go out. It's it's it it, it yeah. differs depending on what kind of music it is, yeah. and uh, and a good symphony orchestra won't need to look at the baton every minute of the of no. the, the piece. But yeah, in, in classical music, uh, the timekeeping role of the conductor is even more important. Whereas yes. with jazz, you can kind of 
set the tempo and then the bass player and the drummer, you know, because they can have just, their own yeah. little actions going and yeah. little things I, going. And, I always, you know. I always find it amusing because most of us, when we think of conductors, we think of of, of uh, someone, somebody like Baron Boyd, you know, you know, waving the baton around there. But if you watch, um, I, I always think it's funny to watch Nelson Riddle, who was one of Sinatra's oh, arrangers and conductors. Was amazing. He oh. was amazing, but his conducting style was hilarious because he would stand up there and instead of waving his arms, you know, around or anything like that, Nelson Riddle would stand very straight and very still and go like this <laughs> and no. look and keep an eye on Sinatra to make sure that he that he was in sync yeah, that he was in sync and that's all the yeah. only thing he was concentrating on was being yeah 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 but I always I, I got news for him I don't blame him <laughs> yeah yeah he wanted <laughs> to make yeah the same yeah thing. you know you know you're on you're on possibly on thin ice there yeah yeah, yeah, yeah but much. but I, I always thought that was funny that you know there's conductors even some of Sinatra's other, uh, other people like Gordon Jenkins that you know they would be going like this and Nelson Riddle would just stand there pointing his fingers like this I was that, that was but kind of Frank funny. Sinatra funny you should bring that him out because he had total control of whoever was conducting him on whatever yeah. band it was yeah he seemed to be the conductor the player the everything and he knew when to come in with his son and yeah. go out, and, and he was more or less leading them more than they were. Sort of well, and he actually and he actually did some conducting in his oh, life. He, he did? wasn't it's it, he wasn't a trained conductor, and his his knowledge of of, of um, reading music was sort of uh, he could, you know just just, <laughs> enough, just enough to get by, yeah. but uh, he knew how an orchestra sh should sound. So occasionally he would do conducting. How wonderful! Um, yeah, yeah, See, yeah, we yeah, never yeah. knew that. That's amazing. I never saw him conduct. But yeah, he yeah, yeah. He I actually mean, I met the guy, met him a couple of times. Right. Lovely man, lovely man. Yeah. And but but it's funny how we don't know those things. Yeah, yeah. He actually conducted an album for Dean Martin. Dean Martin did a record in '58 or '59 called "Sleep Warm" and the Sinatra now, okay. conducted. Okay, so now yeah. how do you know all this? Stuff? <laughs> <laughs> this I is, should uh, know it. This is. This is uh, this is all stuff. So so and like you I said, you do a lot of reading, a lot of research. Yeah, and and uh, and so so I said that you know bebop and hard bop are like my first love, but I also have this very deep affection for the Sinatra, D. Martin sort of jazz pop crossover stuff. Yeah, and I, I soak that stuff up partially yeah. because I I like singing in that style and writing in that style. So but in your mind, with everything you do, where you want to go with the jazz and everything, um, where are you going? What what is in your mind that you would you know? You, you you mentioned Henry Mancini, one of the most well-known conductors, right. band leaders, his own thing, played the piano, everything. Where are you going? So, I think of I think of it as there's really two goals in mind. There is the pipe dream goal and the practical goal. Okay. Um, Let's do, let's, do, let's, do, let's do the practical one oh, first. The practical. <laughs> the practical one is... To make a living and pay the rent. Is, yeah, <laughs> because, because pragmatically, the music business is so difficult, particularly today, yes. that you can't always choose the path exactly that you want to go down. Okay. So you, what you have to do is you have to widen your skill set, be able to do a lot of different things, and do all of them well. Which Patrick does. <laughs> She's yes, much does. too kind to me. No, I've seen him. I've seen. I know what he does. I know what he does. So it's it's about having a very wide skill set to be able. So I I and this is one of the things I'm thankful um, that I have the opportunity to do at UNLV here in Vegas. Uh, see, Dave, I'm giving you a plug. Uh, Dave, you're, well, Dave, you're getting a plug. Yeah, you're now. getting a Ooh. plug, Dave. Ooh. It'll be fifty bucks in the mail. Um, so uh, money as well. Yeah, business man mm, as well. Oh yeah, you gotta you gotta pay the rent. Uh, so you at UNLV, I have the opportunity to not only play and perform but to write arrange uh, uh, do the, the, what like I was saying learning the conducting thing. I would think because you are so talented they want you to do that I would imagine that's what they're, they're yeah they're, they're, they're very anxious to yeah, have me do as much as I can yes because when so they get somebody like you in there that can actually you know fulfill all these places but also want to learn and also to be better than and right. keep gaining you know your mileage right. you're gaining where you want to go so you actually, all right, so we've done that. So now where are you going? Okay, so that's the practical one. That's the practical side of Patrick's pipe dream. Now. Pipe dream one, I mean, like a lot of artists, I would like to make a name for myself and to be able to do this. I've the, the You're going to go under Patrick Hogan? <laughs> I love the name, though. It's like 
Patrick Hogan. It yeah. Of, it, doesn't it roll? Yeah, it does roll. Kind of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, that lovely yeah, I, I don't think I could ever do the stage name thing. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Just very proud. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'd rather be me. I'm yeah, me. I, I have yeah. my own name. I have my own star. Yeah, exactly. Everyone says, no, you don't. You made it up. I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I did not make it up. Somebody else did that for me and gave me this name all through my life that I have to explain yeah. every single time. But, but yeah, no, <laughs> I would like. To, I, lovely. I would. I'd like to, you know, because I, I, I started doing the singing thing a, a few years ago, which I've loved because. I have such an affection for the Sinatra thing, and so I would like to be able to headline and do all that stuff. And I think you will make a name for myself. Are you well, gonna sing for I'd me? Like to. You gotta do a little acapella. Oh Can Lord! We have a little. We have a little microphone here, a little bit of something. On this, we're gonna have to close out. Gonna let you close out on singing, but so you really want to be somebody out there? You're young enough to do it. Um, you already maintain that the jazz is kind of where you're going. Yeah. So you've already got it planned out as to where you're going and what you're doing. Yes, with you know, with the knowledge that sometimes you have to take the jobs that come to you. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think take. Um, I'm not going to say take any job because sometimes you've got to put your standards where your standards are. Yeah. So as long as you keep building yourself up to your standards, yeah. you know, I think the, that's the good opportunities will come. They will yeah. come. Well, I think the you know the more you're out there, the more people see you. I mean, you're, you're you really are. Um, I want to call him a character, but he's more than a character. You have your own personality out there. You play, oh, <laughs> you sit, you play, then you get up and you suddenly arms start flying out and something's <laughs> happening and I don't know. But that's his personality. So here you are. Oh, the country is absolutely wonderful. Um, oh, wait a minute, we didn't mention this. We oh, didn't we didn't mention this. this. Let's talk about this for a little bit. A little yeah. bit before we say, oh, do you want to sing or do it? What do you want to do? You Let's do sing. this first. Do that? Okay. Yeah. Gotta so, look, um, I've got listen to the boss, right? <laughs> yeah, you're the boss. I'll, no, I'll take over this no, you're the boss. <laughs> so, uh, this is a show that we've got uh, at the Alexis Park uh, through Rainmaker Productions. I'm the musical director for it. Uh, and the stars of the show are Freddie B and Tom Mazzaro. It's a wonderful evening. Uh, they do uh, a lot of a very eclectic mix of styles, everything from R and B and country to jazz standards. Um, and uh, the nice Isn't that thing, amazing. Yeah. And th the nice thing about it is that uh, the band, uh, me and the band, we have a, a quartet. It's me, uh, Russ Burt, Red Michaels, and Adam Shindell. Um, we're you just got a shout out out there. <laughs> we're um, they they were very anxious for us to be like as much a part of the show as as, as the stars are. are. We're like the third, collectively the third I've star. I've noticed that. They brought you yeah. in a lot. They brought you in a yeah, lot. Yeah, and yeah. I've seen the show absolutely amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Of course, Sam is wonderful. Sam does all the booking. Hiya, Sam. Sam is amazing. She does all the bookings and everything. And, yeah. Um, so and it's, it's Saturday nights at 7 p.m. at the Alexis Park, which is on Harmon. It's right next to the Hard Rock, which is soon to be the uh, Virgin Hotel, I believe. They, and they it's one bought. perfect blend at the Alexis Park. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Vegas Men of Music. A fabulous show. On that, we're going to close out with a song. Why not? It's amazing. We'll Let's see. We'll be what right shall back. I sing? You, I don't know. That's completely up to you. Oh, maybe, just yeah, go maybe, ahead. Maybe. Every time it rains, it rains. Pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? You'll find your fortunes fallen all over town. Be sure that your umbrella is upside down. Do 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 do. -do. <laughs> Trade them for a package of sunshine and flowers. If you want the things that you love, you must have showers. So when you hear it thunder, don't run under a tree. There'll be pennies from heaven for you and me. Cocktails. <laughs> That's amazing. where I'm going to be in a minute, in the bar. <laughs> yeah, you'll be in the bar after all this absolutely amazing talent. You'll see him around town as he keeps building himself up. Patrick Hogan, thank you for coming thank on. Thank you so absolutely much. It was my wonderful. pleasure. Was my we pleasure. shall return. Once I was alone, so lonely, and then you came out of nowhere like the sun up from the hills. 
cold, cold was the wind And warm, warm, warm were your lips Out there on that ski trail Where your kiss, it filled me with thrills A weekend in Canada and a change of scene was more than I had bargained for. But then I discovered you, and in your arms I found a love that I could not ignore. And down came the sun. Fast, 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 fast Beat my heart I knew When that sun set From that day We'd never part Yeah, from that day uh, 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 We'd never part From that day We'd never part